Hey guys, so the next two nights we're going to be building a shelter, cooking, talking about astronomy, and having a good time. We are in the heat of summer, so about every five minutes I gotta check myself for ticks. So check this out, I found a old tree that had burned from the inside out. Now it would be a nice place to stay the night, but it's probably not the safest idea. I think we're gonna to try to make camp at the base of that big tree over there. Well, just when I thought this would be a good spot, these two massive trees are in a big watery ditch surrounded by thorns, so that's not gonna do. I think the next plan of action is going back to camp, grabbing my tent. We're just gonna pitch on top of the field. Well, the sun's already hit the horizon, so I better hurry back. Well, I got here kind of late last night, so there wasn't a lot of time to find a shelter, but now that we have a lot of daylight, let's go make a shelter. Okay, so I found something interesting. Looks like a tree that had burned from the plains. Went like this and back down. I think the best thing we could do here is probably lay up some sticks next to it, make a little shelter. There's poison ivy absolutely everywhere and I'm wearing Birkenstocks. Here it is. Got a lot of work to do. These are protected lands that I'm on so oftentimes they'll burn the prairie and these trees get caught in the mix, so a lot of this tree is burned from the inside. Let's clear it all away. Oh, ow. Sort of uneven down here, so I'm gonna lay a bunch of sticks at an angle. And hopefully, we can make it nice and level in here. I've never actually built a shelter like this before, so I'm just kind of winging it.
All right, now that we got a base, I was thinking we could throw in some pine leaves, maybe flatten it out a little bit. You do gotta be careful with some of these trees, they have some nasty thorns in them. Figured since we're in the Great Plains, might as well make a big grassy bed. Amazing, isn't it? We gotta do all this for free. I mean, not many people get the privilege of going out and just enjoying nature. I'm lucky because the winds out here can get to 40 to 60 miles per hour because there's really just nothing to block it. But tonight there's absolutely no wind. I'm on the top of a hill, the moon is just over there, and the sun is beaming on the horizon. Take a look at this. This is the CMBR, also known as the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. But what you're seeing can be kind of confusing to imagine at first. What you're looking at is the universe when it was just a few hundred thousand years old. The light you're seeing here began its journey before the Earth even formed. The reason that you couldn't see it before that is because the universe was too hot and opaque. And the light from the image that you just saw has been traveling for about 14 billion years. Essentially, you're just looking at the afterglow of the Big Bang. I absolutely love coming here in the winter because stars are so crispy. You can even see the Milky Way disc. <sighs> so, no, it's not the most comfortable spot, but uh, in any sort of emergency, this would do for the night. I have an absolutely gorgeous archway in front of me and right in the middle of it I can see through and see the stars. I didn't bundle up the top uh, because there's nothing really coming out of the sky. But if it were to be raining, I'd probably suggest you put a bunch of pine leaves on the back. It's really not, there's really not much else you can get from the plains, so it's kind of a desert out here to be honest. Hunting's hard, fishing, harder. But there's no deadly creatures that can get me, so that's nice. No bears like Canada. It's a special place out here, guys. I love it. Well, I'm gonna try to get a few hours rested. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage 
in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. <laughs>